Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day seven of our journey into the first letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. I want you to notice that Paul ended off, off chapter five by saying that God will judge those outside of the church body and that it wasn't for us to do that. But then Paul takes on something that is really a concern. A concern to him because it brought God's sound judgment into disrepute. And that is that there were lawsuits that were taking place among the believers of Corinth and that they were going to the ungodly for judgment. This was a bad reflection on God's ability to really solve the problems in his church. And Paul goes on to say, how is it possible that we who are going to be the judges of the world and also, in a sense, the judges of angels, how is it that we go to the ungodly in order to receive a judgment? Does it mean that we are not qualified, that we, even though we are going to be judging the world and going to be judging angels, that we are not qualified to deal with the matters that arise up in, our, in the church body? He is quite concerned about this because it, br uh, it brought to those who were watching the early Christian church the understanding that they were incapable of managing themselves. Now, I want you to notice that Paul says that if you are people that have lawsuits amongst yourself as believers, he says in verse 7, the very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Isn't that tragic, dear friends, that when we have these uh, arguments taking place amongst ourselves and we run to the world for solutions or to the world in order to find counsel, that he says that that is a clear indication that we have been completely defeated already. I want you to also notice that Paul goes on to say, that instead of running to the world and giving the impression of, to the world that we are um, not united, he says we should rather be wronged. We should rather be cheated. You know, he says in, for the cause of God, we should rather take these things upon us, almost like what Christ said, we should turn the, the left cheek and then the right cheek. We should walk the second mile before we even take such matters to the ungodly. It By allowing you to be slapped on your, your left or right cheek or by walking the second mile or by giving your undergarments to people even when they've asked you only for your outer garment, it revealed the mindset of the believer, that the believer considered himself to be nothing and that Christ should be everything. And he goes on to actually handle some of the questions that were popping up. And you know, dear friends, in order to make this more applicable to our world, there's a lot of problems going on in the world. One of the things on the agenda in the world is that People don't have to be male or female. They can be what they want to be. And yet Paul says this, and he says it in verse 9. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? So don't be deceived. You see, Paul is saying if there are people within the church body that are doing wrongful things, Understand, no matter what that wrongful thing is, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He goes on to say that outside of the church, people um, go to laws or take lawsuits on one another over the following matters. They take it about the sexually immoral. They take it 
about those who are, are idolaters or adulteresses. And then he says, men who have sex with men. It's so interesting that here there are two Greek words that are used for adulterers and those who have men who have sex with men and both both of them point to the fact that you have the passive person and the active person involved in these things and that is that in some sense even if you're thinking that it's already an evil he goes on to say that that thieves and that those who are greedy and those who are drunkard and those who are slanderers and swindlers he says those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. If you are that type of person within the church body, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He goes on to say that he heard that there were some who said, but this is my body. If I'm doing it, but it doesn't hurt anybody else, but it just hurts me, that's my choice. And yet Paul goes on to say, but your body isn't your body. In actual fact, it's the Lord's body. Because he says in verse 14, by his power, this is God, that by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. That means that, that these dead bodies of ours that behave like this, that God is not going to allow us to continue in these dead bodies, but that he is going to raise us up to a better quality of life, to a heavenly life. He goes on to say in verse 15, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? That is quite amazing to me. And then he goes on to use an illustration where he says that a man who unites with a prostitute, as God's word says, the two will become flesh. So Paul is saying that when we who are the body of Christ actually get involved with the things of the world or with the bodies of this world, we in a sense are becoming one flesh with them. And how is it then that if we are the body of Christ, how can we then be, um, allow ourselves to become united with the ungodly? But he, he says in verse 17, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. That means we are in agreement with what Christ requires of us. We are in agreement with what his choices are. Paul finally says, you know that the, this act of actually allowing yourself to be joined to somebody who is, in a sense, ungodly, is not the way that we should be looking at it. He says in verse 19, Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? Dear friends, I want you to remind, to remind you that Jesus in John chapter 16 was telling his disciples that it is important that I'm going to leave you. Now, Jesus was God in human form. And Jesus was about to leave us. But he says, I'm going to the Father. And I'm going to ask the Father to send you the Comforter. And that Comforter was the Holy Spirit. That Comforter, dear friends, is the third person of the Godhead. And that person is God's presence on planet Earth. The Holy Spirit represents the Godhead on planet Earth. But Paul goes on to say that this spirit that finds himself on planet Earth, he has a home, he has a dwelling. His dwelling isn't in the Earth. His dwelling is in your body. Your body becomes his temple, his dwelling place. The Shekinah of God should be found in you. He says, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So Paul is really um, burdened and labors intently to say that you need to be very careful 
not to unite yourselves with the customs of the world. You died to those things. You are alive in Christ. You have become united to Christ. The Spirit of God dwells within you. In some sense, you have become the home of the third person of the Godhead. He is united to you. And therefore, our lives should not be that of the ungodly, but our lives should be that of those who are united to Christ. We should reflect His beautiful image. We should carry out this beautiful agreement, and that is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our minds, with our whole being, and then to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. Dear friends, this is what Paul is calling us to do. And you know, in conclusion to this, the more I study into this letter of Paul that he wrote to the church in Corinth, the more I recognize its value that every member, child of God, who becomes united to Christ should read this because we need to be constantly reminded that we were bought with a price, that we belong to Jesus and that we are part of His body, that that very essence of Christ flows through us. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.